Well, this is something I was really hoping we weren't going to have to talk about. As going into the All-Star break, there was a lot of optimism about the future. There was murmur that, you know, Stone was going to be coming back. Um, after the All-Star break, we got Zach Whitecloud on the horizon. Theodore just came back. You know, Carrier came back. You know, Howden came back. We were getting healthy. And then, you know, the news dropped late yesterday that Mark Stone underwent back surgery and is out for the foreseeable future with no timetable to return. This is this is concerning because I don't know if it's the same back injury that would, got kept him out all last season. I would have to assume that it is because that's just the way that injuries tend to go. You're more likely to re-aggravate something that you already hurt. Um, thank goodness it was deemed a successful surgery. He's expected to make a full recovery. What that timetable is, is unknown. Whether that's him done for a couple months, whether that's him done for the regular season, whether that's him done regular season and postseason is currently up in the air, and I'm fairly certain that the Golden Knights are keeping their hand very close to their chest on this one, especially with the trade deadline coming up very, very soon, which is the real reason why I really wanted to sit down and talk about this, because with Stone's injury, it creates a really intriguing situation for the Golden Knights. Mark Stone's not on the cheapest contract in the world. He's the captain. He's the second highest point getter on our team, despite only playing 43 games this season. And so, you know, he's definitely lived up to his worth. That worth creates a very interesting situation because now we've got a lot of cap space to deal with. You know, we've got a Mark Stone-sized hole in our salary cap as we move him to LTIR. And so this creates a really interesting situation where we went from a team that wouldn't be able to do anything at the deadline to a team that will buy, maybe not even at the deadline, with this news, we may jump in at a deal before the deadline. Now, I've seen a couple of names that were floated around, especially before this report was made public about Stone's surgery, which happened two days ago now, because it's February 2nd. Um, and so, like, obviously, we can look at the names that were being brought up beforehand, which we're going to take a trade, like, asset in, asset out you know, one-to-one -one swap for, you know, salary cap retention, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a GM. I don't understand these things. I'm not even an economist. I'm barely even a college student. Um, but, you know, one of the names that kept coming up was like Noel Achari, who had played with Brew Cassidy in Boston before and then was pretty good under him in that system. And so there was the idea that we bring him in uh, as an off or not an off season, as a trade deadline pickup. Um, another name that I kept seeing come up was um, Ivan Barbashev, Another player from, I think, St. Louis, I don't really know a lot of players, small name players outside of outside of Vegas, but he was another player who was talked about because his like relatively low salary cap hit and we, we would be able to move pieces around to get under the cap. But we've now got a Mark Stone-sized hole in that cap, and so I think, you know, my biggest concern was that the Golden Knights were going to be overly aggressive at the deadline and do something stupid. We've got this, you know, big losing skid, losers of seven of nine going into the deadline. We dropped from first to third. We had a 10-point swing with the Dallas Stars in terms of points, where we went from five points up to five points down uh, for first in the Western Conference. Sure, there's 31 games left in the season. There's plenty of time to recover. But we're now in an interesting situation because the big prizes of free agency that were previously unavailable to us are now just a clever phone call, a fair trade, and, um, you know, the right price away from wearing a Golden Knights jersey in a couple of weeks. Now, the Golden Knights have tend to be the team that strays away from what we call rental players. You know, players that are coming up on the end of UFA deals or that are going to be UFA'd at the end of the season. And their previous team is just trying to offload them for a little bit of a price, knowing that they're not going to re-sign them. And there are a few of those in the NHL right now. Um, but there are a couple of really big ones. You know, the two of the biggest ones being Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. Now, I know it's really hard to give a big sum to a team that's in your conference, but there is, there's something about that deal. There's something about those two players and the history of Vegas going out and getting the biggest fish in free agency or trading for the big player. You know, Mark Stone was the big player coming out or when he was traded to the Golden Knights. Max Pacioretty was the big player when he was traded to the Golden Knights. Um, you know, and then, you know, Robin Leonard was the big goalie when he was traded. And sheesh, uh, like the entire expansion draft was a big thing. We went out and traded for Jack Eichel, which was the big trade of last year. 
And so we've been relatively quiet. We haven't made any splash signings this year, aside from, you know, trading for Shea Weber's rights to free up some cap space uh, in exchange for, you know, uh, for what's his face. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even remember what, what, who we traded at this point. I really feel like I should remember that. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting situation. So to make this work for the Golden Knights management, because now they're, they've got all this money that we can do stuff with. We got to, well, obviously they know how long Stone is going to be out for. Us as the general public probably doesn't, and we probably never will until he throws on his jersey again in two months or three months or seven months at next training camp. So how long he's going to be out for determines what we're going to do at the deadline. And I have this, I already had this big plan for the deadline day. I was almost thinking about like live streaming my reactions, having an instant immediate reaction to any deals the Golden Knights make, both importing players and exporting players. But with this stone injury, him being down for the foreseeable future, something big is going to happen. And it may not happen on the deadline. I would be genuinely shocked if we get through the end of like two weeks from now. We we definitely won't make it through February without um, without something happening. Because if we continue this losing streak, if we come out of the All-Star break and we lose to Nashville and then we lose again, um, that one, everybody's going to start freaking out because one, we'll be out of the playoffs if that happens. And two, we'll be like rudderless. We'll be without a leader. And so they're going to need to bring in someone. And so who that someone will be, I, I've referenced Kane and Taves, one or the other. The price for Kane will probably be too high, but Jonathan Taves is probably a decent option. He's a serviceable player. He's got a lot of Stanley Cup experience. You know, he's a player that I think would be you know, a really decent move. You could also look elsewhere. There are two other big names that keep coming up um, in the forms of Ryan O'Reilly and of Vladimir Tarasenko from the St. Louis Blues. Both of those players, same thing. O'Reilly will probably fetch a lower price versus Tarasenko, who's more of a pure goal scorer. And he has absolutely demonized the Golden Knights over the course of his career in St. Louis. And so it would be quite a full circle moment for the Golden Knights to go out and get Vladimir Tarasenko. Now, I could think of a trade package because St. Louis doesn't want to lose him uh, for free. They want to get something out of it. And, you know, while I'm really hesitant for the Golden Knights to throw money at a problem, as we've done so many times, I keep thinking back to the Thomas Tatar trade, which was a disaster. Um, you know, we imagine I could see a package of like Brett Howden and Michael Amadio and like a second going that way in exchange for you know, Vladimir Tarasenko or Ryan O'Reilly, you know, two roster players and a pick for one player. And we'd have to call somebody up to fill that void. Obviously, we've got some good players in the American Hockey League, you know, Jonas Ronbjerg and, you know, players like Sakari Maninen, you know, Ivan Morozov and Brendan Brisson. Those are all players who are probably ready to make the next step. Sure, none of them are putting up exceptional numbers in the American Hockey League. Granted, Henderson Silver Knights are one of the worst teams in the American Hockey League right now, which I can't quite figure out why. They've got all this talent. I think it's down to goaltending or something. I don't know. And we have to remember, we also have a rather, rather nice backup, backups, backup goalie in the system in the form of Laurent Brassois, who we are really hesitant to call up because he's put up pretty good starts in the American League. And I doubt that he's going to get back to go. I'm doubt he's going to get to go back down through waivers for free next time without getting picked up. So I wouldn't be shocked if the Golden Knights also move on from him, especially with Robin Leonard coming back into the fold next season, assuming we don't trade him in the off season. But I'm looking six moves down the road. The fact of the matter is, in the immediate term, the Golden Knights need to find a way to bag to bag some wins. We're slipping. We've not looked very good coming out of the you know going into the break. I doubt we're going to look great coming out of the break. And with the news that Stone is out for the foreseeable future, I'm sure the team confidence is just in shambles right now. So like management's probably going to have to do something. I just wonder what that something's going to be. I'm waiting anxiously. I've got my theories. It's it's we're going to get someone. It's going to be someone big. We're going to make headlines. TSN's going to be talking about it forever. NHL Network's going to talk about it for a week because it'll be the first deal of the deadline or it'll happen before the deadline. So we're just going to dominate the news cycle. There'll be some big press release, and I'm sure we're going to meet said player at the airport, but it's going to happen. It's not a matter of if anymore. It's now a matter of when and who and what the price is going to be. And so I'm almost anxious to see what's going to happen. I, I really hate when things like this happen. I remember when Leonard went down for the season and I started freaking out um, and obviously things have turned out okay. Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill have been okay in absence of Robin Leonard. 
I just wonder what the team's going to do without their captain for the foreseeable future. And I hope whoever we bring in is able to plug the hole of 17 goals, 21 assists, and 38 points over the first 43 games of the season. Um, so we're just going to see what happens. We're passengers as fans on this one. I just hope management doesn't overreact, overextend, and sell the future for a temporary problem because I still would like to be a fan of this team in 10 years, you know, when our headlining players are Brendan Brisson and Ivan Morozov and Daniil Mirmanov. I really hope that we don't get rid of the future for a temporary problem. I know Bill Foley wants to win a Stanley Cup this year, but he has to focus on the future as well as this year. If we come out and win, we may not do anything. If we get hot after the break, we may do nothing. But I just, I have a gut feeling something's going to happen and we're going to have to wait and see what that something is. So obviously if, when that something happens, I'll give you a full breakdown on it as I love breaking down transactions. I haven't gotten to do a trade yet um, since, like I haven't gotten to do an in-season trade. I've only gotten to do uh, the trades that happened in the off season. I'm sure a trade deadline day is going to be one heck of a day that I'm going to have to clear my schedule for. Um, so I'm excited for that, but also not excited for why we get to be active on deadline day anymore. So um, with that, I guess, thanks thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate the views. Um, subscribe if you like it. I've got all kinds of videos coming out between now and the end of the All-Star break. And um, I guess I will catch you guys either at the next game or when something interesting happens, which could be tomorrow for all I know.